Welcome, Tanya. This is the first of our interviews that we're doing ahead of the Asia Regional uh, Youth Conference that's happening uh, in Kuala Lumpur later this month, hosted by Arrow, um, which will bring together a wonderful set of people across the, the across countries in the region to talk about the work they are doing on uh, sexual rights and reproductive rights with their communities. So, Tanya, welcome. And uh, Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, my name is Tanya. I'm from Uttarakhand, India. I have been working, I have an organization, Samantha Foundation. We work in Uttarakhand and we work specifically in the remote geography with the tribal and rural and forest dwelling communities. I, if I start, go back to the time how I started and who I am. So uh, I am from Uttarakhand. I did my uh, master's in social work from University of Delhi. And I have experience of, uh, I started off my journey in the development sector right from my graduation days. I started volunteering with the organizations. And from there, I got a direction in life and um, worked with the various urban uh, communities in, in, in and around Delhi and also worked with the sex workers in uh, Delhi and in Kolkata. I went on to explore Shonagachi area. From there, the interest around SRHR and uh, awareness, the idea of how we can aware people on the issues of HR, HR, SRHR started in my mind. And then I went to Rajasthan, worked again in the rural communities of uh, Rajasthan. In 2017, early 2017, I came back from Rajasthan, started working in uh, Uttarakhand, started traveling, exploring the communities. And from there, the journey began. And 2018 is the time when I started with Samantha. We got Samantha registered in 2019. And my journey, um, I as a person always was not at all a very happy teenager because my experiences with the SR, HR uh, were not at all good. And from there, then I, then I studied and understood and interacted with a lot of communities in different diverse areas. From there, I realized that there is a need to bridge this gap and it can be only done through educating the communities, people, young girls about SRHR, starting with menstrual health and hygiene and understanding of gender. And that's how my uh, journey started. Great. So a bit about the project that you're doing right now. Yeah. So uh, in 2000, 2021, I became the part of uh, Change Makers Fellowship done by Arrow and uh, in that we learned a lot about what, what exactly SRHR is about the theoretical part about building projects and I was already working in the area I was working in Uttarakhand uh, in the, with the forest dwelling communities so uh, in this project during this fellowship because uh, I was working in the area so I was into number one, organizing women into groups and sharing about uh, menstrual health and hygiene, about their sexual rights, sexual health. And from there, then again, COVID happened. And during COVID, I realized that in such communities, there is a need to spread the word at a higher pace. And I, as an individual or as a team of four, five people, it was becoming a challenge. Then we used technology as a medium, we uh, made certain videos, certain ICT material for the community, and then we got a good traction because we realized that in such areas, healthcare is taking a lot of time to reach, but technology is reaching them at a faster speed. So from there, the idea of building a WhatsApp chatbot came to my mind along with the team. And uh, that is what I pitched in Arrow Change Makers Fellowship, and uh, they were very supportive. They liked the ideas. They helped me build the idea in a way how to uh, exactly reach to that point wherein I can build my WhatsApp chatbot. 
and today i have a working chat box wherein we women and girls anybody they can put in their questions there is a small quiz they answer a certain it breaks the taboos around talking about srhr it also the whatsapp chat box also ask certain questions in a way that it helps you and uh, reach to a point where it you yourself think that whether my understanding was a myth or was was it a scientific thing i knew for example touching of pickle during menstrual cycles so it's a myth so how so that's certain points we have in the chatbot and we have videos at the end the chatbot takes you takes you to the youtube videos you can just click and uh, watch those videos and even if your query is not answered at the end you can say that i still want to know more then a menstrual health educator will reach out to you and uh, you can talk to that person over phone and your answer will your questions will get answered so the initiative is entirely tech based tech based yes it is tech based but in because uh, what i have seen that only technology in the rural and tribal or forest dwelling remote geographies only technology is not fruitful so we have a team of girls community heroes we call them as we train them and then they take their devices their phones and then they explain it to the women and they share the word so they are from the community so for example a group of maybe um, in the group we have around 20 25 women so two or three groups are managed by one girl so approximately 50 to 60 women if they have any questions and they want to know so they can come and reach out to the community heroes those girls and then they teaches them they treat them okay you can go on to this chat board and how you can make uh, use of the services available so it it works it doesn't work in silo i would say it is a whole cycle of uh, using technology along with the community people working on the ground i get it great that's excellent so uh, uh so how many leaders would you have trained and they reach out to a community that is about how large okay so the community is quite big i under this project was doing a pilot so a pilot is being done with around uh, 300 women 300 households i would say and yes. we have a, a team of right now our community we have 10 community fellows who are working okay. in the area yeah so they're all young people or are they older women as well so they're young girls awesome excellent excellent great lovely so uh you know when i was just kind of reading up uh are there like challenges when you said that these are remote communities and forest dwellers so when it comes to sexual and reproductive health and rights are there challenges peculiar to uh these communities yes yes there are so the challenges start at a very young age even i would say even before the periods come to a girl's life because the uh, in these areas till today i have myself seen that there are child marriages happen so early marriage leads to early maternity so there have been instances in the past few years uh, that the girls they said the first period they had was at their in laws place or maybe they had at their mother's place and when they went to their in laws place the first time they went to their in laws place and they got pregnant so early maternity leading to a lot of abortions and uh, not abortions i would i would say miscarriages and uh, multiple issues and also uh, having no gap in number of children the uh, issue lack of understanding on the even availability of resources for srhr for having a good and healthy lifestyle so the problem if i would say is not only limited to the knowledge or the resources it is a mix of both lack of awareness lack of understanding lack of availability of resources so we can conclude it in a way that they have no access to information they have no access to resources if at all they have access affordability and availability of the resources becomes a challenge 
So that's what the whole problem around these communities is all about. So I was just wondering, uh, you know, like for women who are young today, like say between say whatever 15 to 25 and their mothers so you would be be like you know in contact with women uh with the girls as well as their mothers so what is your uh, uh you know uh, how many things have changed for the mothers and their daughters that's a very nice question <laughs> how things have changed for the mothers and their daughters initially when we started working i could not see any difference because say for example using uh, pads and sanitary napkins during menstruation so the girls a girl of 15 years of age and a woman of maybe 30 or 35 years of age they are still using the same cloth so the situation is same if the mother got married at the age of maybe 13 40 the girl is getting married at the age of maybe 16 or 17. But again, in the community, in such in the community where I work, we have grandmothers at the age of 35. Yes. And that's that's a big challenge. There are girls till now who say that Didi, I got married when I was in my dad's lap. And now I'll go to my in-law's place. She's all ready to go to her in-law's place. So the challenges are quite similar, but yes, with the changing times, the good part is uh, the young girls, they are quite uh, quick to adapt the changes. Like when I introduce them to the sanitary napkins or to the menstrual cups even, so they're ready to give it a try. And now we have a good chunk of women who are using menstrual cups. Okay. Yeah, and in each, and the elders they said give garni cheese. This is not so good. But the young girls they said really want to try. And this wow. is all happening. We have also created such videos on our YouTube channel and uh, it, train them using the cup and the resources. If you want to try, maybe one on one you can try. So now every time they come up, the community heroes they come up to us. They're like today, ten girls were asking for the menstrual cups these many girls want to know more. So there is a constant discussion. And yes, I would also like to add that a uh, few of them, they came to me and they said that in the past one or one and a half year, they feel more confident about their bodies, number one. Number two, they have become vocal in front of the doctors. They said initially when we used to go to the doctors, my husband would go and he would tell that this is the problem this lady has. And the women would not say a single word. But now today, she knows what the problem is. Because we conduct continuous trainings. I do the trainings. And during the trainings, we introduce them. Entire one day we take in telling them the female anatomy. That this is how your body looks like. If you have a pain, it is not in your stomach. What does lower abdomen mean? What is uterus? What are fallopian tubes? Everything. So today they say that we are we are very happy when we go to the doctor and we tell them that if the doctor is saying rasoli hai, you have a cyst. So we tell them, is it in the stomach or is it in the uterus? Or is it in the ovaries? So that's a win for us that at least they can now talk and share their problems and acknowledge that they have this problem. Great, uh, Tanya, that's really wonderful to hear. So, uh, you know, uh, maybe you can just give up me, uh, you know, a couple of examples where you felt that, uh, you know, the work that you're doing, it left you feeling that, you know, the work is having an impact on the ground. Yeah. So, uh, I, I shared this, the women, they are both number one. Number two, initially I faced a lot of backlash from the community and especially from the men because they were like, we haven't seen girls coming, girls having a meeting. It makes no sense. For them, it was always the men. It will happen and it is always the men who sit together and they will discuss on everything, on a girl's life, on a women's life, on a what from small issue to a big issue. 
but today the women they meet continuously and they talk and they talk about their bodies they talk about so initially when i was mobilizing women i was even thrown out of the houses many times the men said aap gandi baatein karte ho prabhita women we don't need, uh, talk about such things to our women so will not allow my our girls to go for the meeting i said okay no problem but now the girls from the same households are coming and they are using the menstrual cups and few of them they no stitching so they have also sewed their own sanitary napkins the reusable cloth pads so that's a win win for me i believe so really curious to know when a backlash happens does that make you feel threatened or afraid and how do you deal with it uh during my early days when i was doing volunteering and uh, again working with the sex workers in that area went to shonagachi all alone to explore i used to feel very bad that why i am coming i am giving my time why are these people not at all listening to me i am coming for you for you people but now with with time i think i have evolved and i because i am also everybody age and with age you also understand and you evolve when you have that patience you get that patience so i was very patient i said no it's okay it's okay maybe they will come sometime because now i and i understand i understand the social structures where it is not the women who is saying no i don't want to come it is the men who is saying on her behalf the day women says ki i don't want to come i don't want to be part of this this is something not my need then i will think about it that maybe she doesn't need it i think women don't need such things and i am wasting my time and their time but never have i ever come across any young girl or women who said this thing that this is not good some elderly women they at times say that kaisi baatein karte ho you are such a young girl and you don't talk good things you are a, you're not a good girl but they make fun i know at the end they always like when we talk about health issues So Tanya, you uh, so which means the project has kind of been on the ground for about two years now. Ah uh, yes, it is. It is on ground, but with Arrow, I have built a chatbot and take it. I took it to uh, another step wherein I built broaden technology in between with Arrow support. Right, great. So the the chatbot has been there for about a year. For about. Uh, um, Yeah, almost yeah. Not about a year, but six seven months because I was part of the fellowship uh, in twenty twenty one, and it, it was during these times. Yeah. So just explain a bit. How does the chatbot work? So chatbot works in a way that you uh, we have an entire content created on chatbot. We have a helpline number. You send a hi to that number. It gives you different options, and you have to just go and follow the options. Right. And at the end. it will answer your questions you select out of the questions it will answer your questions and at the end it will also uh, give you an option to watch a youtube video on the question you asked and the answer the chatbot gave you even if you want to know more you can watch that video if the video if you are satisfied with the video you can send a yes if you send a no the chatbot will text you again on whatsapp and it will say that a menstrual health educator will reach out to you for further query and then the health educator will talk to the person over telephone we talk and then if the case is serious we refer them to the nearby hospital tell them that you can what area you are in and we can take suggest you to reach out a gynae and discuss your problems also the government of india they have a e sanjeevni app it is a telemedicine by government so we also suggest women to Opt for telemedicine if they are not able to go. So we are also mobilizing them. We are also giving them awareness on such things. Right. So which means that uh, uh, women will need to have smartphones to use it themselves. Yes. Yes. And that's a challenge also. Not every woman has the chat for a uh, smartphone to use for herself. So the husbands or their boys, men generally they have it. so again that is a challenge for the chatbot to work at times that becomes a challenge that's why we have the community heroes if there is some urgency and the husband is not at home and maybe he doesn't own smartphone you can reach out to the community heroes and uh, 
maybe your query can get answered right 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 great congratulations tanya that's really excellent and uh, path breaking so um, this uh, the mentoring and all of that that you received from arrow in what way did it help you with arrow uh, i remember the first session i had with arrow and i'll never forget it i always write it to them also that one of their activity was about the privilege walk and it is one of the best activity i have had in the past few years and it talked about a lot of issues of how privileged we are in terms of gender in terms of caste class resources everything so that gave me a direction number 1 number 2 uh, i got a thorough understanding on a lot of uh, things about uh, srhr that it is not only limited to uh, what the term says that it is not only limited to sexual rights or using contraceptions or menstrual health or maternal health it is beyond that it is about lgbtqs it is about society it is so that mentoring was amazing amazing i would say superb and then the second half of the training was about building a project it was about building a mind map and uh, they they had a very good organized sessions they talked about how do we build how do we understand our mind why if i want to do something why do i want to do that what is the problem specific problem i want to address so those sessions were really helpful they have a good trained uh, staff and they were very nice lovely great and uh, so here in uttarakhand you work on your own or do you have like a you know like a group of people that you work with yes i have a team i have a team we we work on education and health education is also part of it and uh, we work in the government schools we build libraries we have a team i have a co-founder prashant he's with me and guneet is also part of co team we have a good team of these 10 fellows i told and plus five other people so we have excellent so uh, lovely so uh, you're reaching out to women and girls and are you also reaching out to boys and men of the community uh we are reaching out to boys in the school the children through that's what we are doing but uh, right now we don't really reach out to men and talk specifically about srhr with men we're not doing that Great, excellent. So, uh, what plans, Tanya? I mean, as you go ahead, uh, what, how do you see the project growing? Uh, in the future, I see that I reach. I'll make the uh, chatbot more interesting, more communicative, and uh, maybe I want to make this chatbot multilingual so that India is a very diverse country. We have many languages, and a lot of people they need this, and they are living in the rural. and tribal geographies of the country so i want to uh, make this a pan india thing and uh, so, bring in more doctors on it maybe if i get experts on gynees and at the end if there is some issue and they can directly call to a gynee and link maybe e sanjeevni with that that is all technical part but i look forward to doing that excellent thank you tanya and all the best this sounds wonderful thank you thank you